Surgical Anatomy Lesson 1 The Spleen. Actually, I prefer to start this series of lessons uh, with the spleen because it's really connected uh, in the mind of, of both lay people and the medical students and medical doctor with surgery. Uh, if you asked anyone, especially outside the medical career, of course, about the spleen and its function, uh, he will just tell you it is an organ that could be removed in surgery. It's really connected to uh, traumas and accidents and a ruptured, ruptured spleen and splenectomy or total splenectomy. Um, Actually, a hematologist uh, will, uh, or immunologist will hate me for saying this, uh, but still, uh, this is a fact that lay people say, think that spleen is really just a, some, an organ related to surgery or to splenectomy. Ancient people actually thought the spleen was a, a center of laughter, no more. Uh, and um, earlier surgeon, when removing the spleen, they were arguing that the, there is no obvious loss of function, so the spleen is a functionless uh, organ which doesn't harm the patient at all to uh, remove it. Of course, modern medicine uh, discovered that this is, a, this is our own concept, uh, and now it's have a respectable rule in immunology and hematology, uh, and pediatrics, of course, uh, but we will stick to the anatomy and surgery in this video to uh, talk about the spleen. Okay. Here's some uh, facts about the spleen to remember. It's the odd numbers sequence. It's a mnemonic to remember the size or the dimension of spleen. It's 1 times 3 times 5 inches. And 7 is the weight of spleen in O's. I really don't know what is the O's, or I'm pronouncing it right or not, <laughs> I really don't know. But 7 O's equal. 220 grams 9 to 11 to 11 all the ribs in which the spleens are related it's related to the 9th 10th and 11th ribs okay so um, any fracture in one of those ribs could be could mean also a uh, uh, rupture spleen uh, the other topic we are going to talk about is the splenule. A splenule is um, an accessory spleen that grow uh, outside the, the main bulk of the main tissue of the spleen. It's really not uh, not uncommon um, um, finding in an operative field. It's between 11 to 44 percent, and actually it's more in hematological disorders. And this is very important because. Missing a splenule in hematological disease uh, means that the patient will not improve. Uh, so, uh, uh, actually, in, in rupture spleen, uh, for example, when if you miss the splenule, it will be okay. But in hematological disease, you should search for splenule, uh, splenules and remove them. The most common site, which is in 75%, is near the hilum, which we can see in this picture. This is a splenule, and this is the spleen. This is both close to the hilum. So, 75% of splenules are found here but you, you should search for spleen uh, splenules uh, uh, all over all over the abdomen and it's more common sites okay uh, the third topic we will talk about is the hilum of the spleen the hilum of the spleen is a really important structure because of when you are when you are performing a splenectomy you should ligate this vessel the splenic vessels in the hilum and you should know that there is two types of splenic hilums there is a simple distribution hilum and the medusa like distribution uh, hilum um, a, a point aside what is the medusa like we you know, we know also a keyboard medusa medusa actually is a some so, uh, some character from the greek mythology she was a pretty girl like this one and she was cursed to be as, uh, as her hair will uh, for uh, will change it to snakes so this is medusa with hair full of snakes so anything branching like this like snakes branching out from a small head like this is a medusa like distribution we also have a uh, cable medusa uh, the vessels around the umbilicus actually ancient doctors were really romantic about uh, naming things so simple distribution and medusa like distribution 
for bad luck, it's seventy percent Medusa like. So uh, it's more common to uh, encounter a high lamb like this, which full of branching vessels uh, here and here. So if you r just ligated this one and divide it, you are missing another splenic branch or uh, branch from splenic artery. So you should uh, be careful while while ligating the splenic artery. And the simple distribution, it's, it's easy to uh, just like get the main trunk uh, close to the uh, close enough to the spleen. Okay, uh, the th uh, the fourth topic we'll talk about is a segment. Uh, actually, uh, modern so, uh, modern medicine showed that this uh, the spleen is not uh, just what like it's supposed to be a one segment organ. It's really formed from five segments. And this segment is depending on the blood vessels or, or the branching blood vessels of the spleen. We will see another example uh, for the segmentation, which depends on the blood vessels in the liver. Uh, but uh, here in the spleen, we see five segments. The importance of this uh, information is that you can perform partial splenectomy. As we know, in surgery, removal of uh, an organ is really depending on its blood supply ligation of its blood supply so if you know the pattern of this branching you can or you, you can perform a partial splenectomy okay uh, the the fifth topic is the splenic vessels here in this diagram we can see the splenic vessels this is the splenic artery right here this, it is a branch from from the celiac trunk this short trunk is a celiac trunk coming from uh, the abdominal aorta and it's uh, its course is in the upper border of the pancreas. Here is the head of the pancreas uh, in the C-shaped part of the duodenum. This is the head of the pancreas, and the pancreas is oblique um, upward. Its tail is upward. Its tail in the hilum of the spleen. So, uh, actually, it's removed from the diagram to to be simpler. But this is the upper border of the uh, pancreas. Uh, here in this diagram, you can see that the artery is somewhat tortuous. Not very, not a straight artery. It's a fact. Actually, uh, there's a, lo a lot of explanation from um, for this tortuosity, but according to Scandalakis, which uh, a very respectable uh, book of surgical anatomy, it said this tortuosity is really idiopathic. Uh, so this is one theory. Uh, you can search uh, uh, yourself about uh, another series, but this is what one acceptable series that is just an idiopathic tortuosity. Uh, and this is splenic artery ending in the hilum of the spleen, uh, branching in the two pattern, as we said, the medusa uh, like pattern or the sample pattern. This is a splenic vein carrying blood from the spleen uh, on the uh, posterior part of the pancreas, on the, or the posterior wall, of the, um, uh, posterior part of the pancreas. And this is the inferior uh, mesenteric vein. Uh, communicating with the splenic vein and here is the superior mesenteric uniting with the uh, splenic vein to form the portal vein here is the portal vein this is short segment is the portal vein branching here to right and uh, so sorry to left and right portal uh, it's about five centimeter uh, very small and very important by the way blood vessel uh, the splenic vessels have two important branches the short gastric branches and the left gastroparotic branches, and we will talk more about these branches uh, when we uh, speak about the, or talk about the stomach and its blood supply. But now it's enough to uh, know this information. Okay, so when performing a splenectomy, you should ligate all of these vessels to be able to remove uh, the spleen. And as we know, don't be wor don't worry about the stomach. There is a lot of anastomosing blood vessels. So if you ligated the short gastric and the left gastric plug, it will be okay still. The stomach will have a good blood supply, don't worry. Uh, uh, then we will now move to the splenic ligaments. This is a really important topic about the spleen, the splenic ligament. Actually, I prefer to leave it to another video. Okay, thank you.